African Affairs Analyst Jermaine Shawalu joins us now via Skype from London to talk on this. Now, Jermaine, according to Bray, it is the belief of the U.S. that it does not happen. If it does not happen in Nigeria, it doesn't happen anywhere on the African continent. What do you make of this statement? Well, thanks a lot for having me this morning. I really believe that that statement is true. Um, Nigeria um, is the giant of Africa as we know it, um, the largest economy on the African content, continent, and we have been moving in leaps and bounds over the past few years. Now, it's true that whenever, if someone waves, as he said, the, if, if waivers in Nigeria, it also waves um, around Africa because we have that leadership ability, that ability to influence and to inspire change or transformation in the whole continent as a whole um just take for example one that could relate with people um more easily the entertainment industry whatever you see happen in the entertainment industry in nigeria is a trend that is being followed through throughout the whole of africa we seem to lead in that area so you can see that in a in a continent that has up to um, 1.2 billion people with that population um, of 63 percent of the population being aged um, below 25 it shows that nigeria is influencing the african culture um you know socially and also politically we have um that voice that loud voice security wise the nigerian um, um, armed forces and we are people to be able to deal with external um, forces and um, problems when it comes to other nations through the AU and UN peacekeeping mission. So we are truly a power and you know many companies when it comes to business all, also, they experience so much growth in Nigeria. If a product can sell well in Nigeria, you can be sure that the whole of Africa will receive it very well too. So um, we are truly um, a leading force when it comes to influence and transformation in the African continent. And I'll ask you, do you think the country really understands this? And you made a statement, you said it, it seems Nigeria seems to be leading when it comes to entertainment. Do you think we're really leading when it comes to politics, finance? I mean, look at Rwanda. The country just came out of, um, of, of a civil war. And we know the progress that country has made so far. Do you think Nigeria understands its role as a leader on the continent? Um, you, you make a very, very good point there. Um, you may have um, a kind of influence um, over something or, or someone, but your ability to acknowledge it and maximize it is what you actually see, make sure that you actually um, make progress in life or in business. Now, Nigeria has that influence. We have that power. We have that potential to do great things in the African continent. But if we don't begin to maximize that kind of power that we have, we will see other nations, as you mentioned, such as Rwanda, which has experienced so much economic growth over the past few years, moving from a farming economy to a knowledge economy right now, whereby the whole world is investing in it, whereby they represent a lot of um, transformation agendas when it comes to um, what a true nation should be like. Nigeria has to refocus itself now and say that we have what it takes. Politically, we need to get our political act together. We need to build strong institutions that will be able to drive around the change that many Nigerians so desire to see. We must actually rise up and say, you know what, people are watching us, whether we, 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 whether we realize it or not. We have so much influence. Everything we are doing is being watched. And also, some people actually mirroring what we are doing. So we must begin to say, okay, um, to, um, to whom much is given, much is expected. There's a great expectation for Nigeria to actually do a lot of things. And we really need to start doing that right now. With a population of almost 200 million, you talked about how products sell in Nigeria. I would also ask, would you say the U.S. is sincerely interested in Nigeria as a country or simply protecting its interests? Well, you know, the United States of America always um, seeks to protect its own interest. Um, security is big business, um, so to say, in America. They produce a lot of ammunition and all that. And, you know, when they start trading with nations, know that they also want to sell their goods and services. However, the U.S. also knows that Nigeria's um, stability is, um, is, is very crucial to the stability of Africa. Imagine if there's a war or there's a problem in Nigeria. Where would the refugees go to? The whole of the sub-Saharan 
one continent will be affected where we all this 180 million people be um, go to do we just see what's happening in the northeast even in the um, south area um, cameroon is complaining with all the um idps that are moving over to that side so you can see how it can actually affect if something bad happens in Nigeria, can affect the whole of um the african continent so u.s is is strategically looking at security on one aspect they want to ensure that nigeria remains a strong security force um within this country to ensure that there's stability within the continent and also their own economic interest because nigeria is actually very very um apart from just the oil um aspect and the oil um, that we produce we have a lot of other um uh, the mining sectors which are developing right now the it sectors which are developing also we, there's so much potential for growth in our in our in our country that we need to explore and we can see the chinese actually right now which form the um nigeria's um uh, africa as a whole um where the, the, our, our trading is the largest with the chinese right now no longer the u.s and the uk like before so it's important when it comes to trade that nigeria needs to take its responsibility we know of the african free um african continental and um, free trade agreement that nigeria opted out from and also the echo uh, the economic partnership agreement and nigeria opted out from too so we have to realize that why did we opt out of these agreements that could benefit the african continent but did we see it as not benefiting us as a whole we must look at our influence and say how do we maximize it um and, and let it benefit the people as a whole on ground thank you so much for your time Shemaine shawalu african affairs analyst